At the beginning of the film, it shows that Michael Jennings is a successful scientist and reverse engineer. Michael is now starting a project for a firm called Nexum. He transports a 3D display to a hidden facility, where he meets Rita, a Nexum attorney. She says she'll meet him again in two months. Michael spends two months working tirelessly and alone in a computer clean room. He disassembles, analyzes, and tests the 3D monitor to assess its functionality. His final offering for Nexum must be a superior product that allows Nexum to outperform its competitors. It's the big day, and Michael is revealing his project to a Nexum group. He upgraded the display by removing the monitor and leaving only a hologram. The tiny audience departs the room, leaving only Rita and Michael. Rita presents Michael with a bottle of champagne to express her congratulations. In two months, he accomplished what they had been working on for three years. Many of Michael's recent recollections appear on the screen before abruptly ending with a picture of him entering inside the building two months ago. Shorty, Michael's friend, is retrieving his memory from the monument and moving forward to the present. Several images from his recollections appear on the monitor before being removed. His pal finishes the elimination of the remaining memories. Michael appears to be dizzy, and Shorty urges he take it easy. Michael requests his paycheck, and Rita brings him an envelope containing a check for $526,000. Michael and Shorty are in a workout room, and Shorty is keeping track of Michael's health and response time. Michael then tells Shorty that he isn't concerned about the memories Shorty erases. Instead, he focuses on memories of pleasant and exciting events, such as trips. Michael enters his apartment and settles up to watch television. He reads an invitation to an event from Alcom's owner, Jimmy. Michael also reads that the Red Sox have lost. Michael and Shorty are attending Jimmy's formal event, listening to violinists and other musicians perform. Michael meets Dr. Rachel Porter. She is a biologist and works for Jimmy. Michael is blunt and asks Rachel to accompany him. She tells him she desires a normal chat. Jimmy appears and greets Michael. We find out Jimmy is Michael's old schoolmate. Jimmy asks Michael to consider a two to three year position in optics. Jimmy refused to reveal any further information, but stated that Michael would receive eight figure stock options. According to Michael, it is impossible to erase someone's memories from the previous two to three years. Michael chooses to complete the task and arrives by helicopter at a big Alcom building to meet with John Wolfe. Michael will be assigned a room and will be unable to leave the school. Michael is expected to place all of his personal belongings in an envelope that he can reclaim when he receives his paycheck at the end of the project. Michael and John meet Jimmy. Michael receives an injection that will serve as a marker. His memory will be erased up until the second injection, which he will receive once the job is accomplished. While Jimmy goes to business, Michael inspects the facility and encounters Rachel again. Jimmy returns and informs Rachel that he will be joining the team. Jimmy takes Michael into a different room and introduces him to the other half of his team, Dr. William Decker. John is putting the isotope pistol back in its case as Michael sits opposite from Jimmy and demands to know what occurred. The experiment was successful, and three years had gone. Michael enters his house after a long absence. Michael gets online from his home computer and notices that his balance has increased from $50,000 to $92 million. Michael goes to Reedy Grant, signs a document, and receives an envelope. The objects are not his, and he is perplexed. He evidently mailed the envelope to them four weeks ago, as evidenced by his signature on the form. Michael has no recollection, but he simply wants to sell some shares and make some money. He is told that he forfeited his shares four weeks ago and has handed the document with his signature. Michael becomes irritated and upset, and he departs. Michael returns home and contacts Jimmy, but he is out of the office and will not return until the afternoon. Michael realizes that the front door is open, walks to it, and closes it. He then finds that two hallway doors are open. At that point, two men attack and overpower him. Then three more men unlock the front door, and one of them tasers Michael. The FBI agents transport him to their facilities. Michael is questioned about the technology he was working on for Jimmy. Michael denies knowing anything. The agents threaten and accuse Michael of treachery. They want to know why Michael signed recent patent applications. Decker apparently cannot be questioned because he died after falling from a 14-story balcony. The agents tie Michael to the chair and try to extract memories from him, but they only locate minor shards of his recollections and stop. 
one of the agents pulls a cigarette from a pack in Michael's envelope. Cigarette smoke triggers the fire suppression system. The hallway door opens automatically and Michael straps free. Michael rushes to the envelope and grabs his glasses, which allow him to see. Michael pushes an agent out of the way, exits the room, and goes through the building and out. He hurries down the sidewalk to a nearby stairwell. While running, Michael is spotted by John from Alcum. John then notices agents racing down the sidewalk. Michael enters a bus terminal. He dropped the envelope after being bumped, and while gathering the goods he noticed a bus ticket. He then boards a bus before the agents see him and flees the scene. While riding the bus, Michael examines the contents of the envelope. A burglar on the bus notices a ring Michael has removed from the packet. He steals it, gets off the bus, and dashes down the sidewalk. Michael pursues the thief but comes to a halt as he exits the bus and learns he is no longer in Reedy Grant. Michael goes inside and asks who sent him the package four weeks ago. She shows Michael his signature on the shipping document. Jimmy visits the gizmo that Michael and Dr. Decker developed. It prophesied the future, including Michael's death. Jimmy receives an error message and is unable to use the machine. He instructs John to find Michael. Michael seeks sanctuary in a hotel room and dumps the contents of the envelope on the bed. There's a slip of paper with a rhyme on one side and numbers on the other. There's an Alchem access card, a little can of hairspray, a butane lighter, and other objects Michael doesn't recognize as his. Michael phones Shorty and arranges to meet him at Union Station at 9 o'clock. Michael holds a toy bird at the station and remembers Rachel. He then spots a man in coveralls with Edison, inscribed on the back grabbing a key from a utility door. Michael takes the key from his envelope, which has an Edison tag attached. Shorty arrives, and Michael reveals the contents of the envelope. Shorty believes Michael should question himself why he gave away $90 million. Michael revealed that he was working with William Decker. Shorty believes Decker was working on a classified laser project before the authorities shut him down. Apparently, the laser project would cost $500 billion. One of the scientists tells Jimmy in the Alcom lab that Michael's time machine can be repaired. Jimmy phones John and tells him they don't need Michael anymore. Shorty tells Michael he needs to speak with Decker. Michael says he can't since Decker died after falling out of his 14th floor bedroom window. Shorty becomes afraid and wishes to escape. Alcom's assassins, led by John, position themselves near Michael and Shorty and begin firing. One of John's troops begins shooting at Shorty. Michael attacks the shooter, knocking him out. Michael rushes down the steps, onto a subway station, and then through a door into a maintenance tunnel. Michael is followed by two of John's guys armed with firearms. Michael is currently stuck in a metro rail tunnel beside John. They're several feet apart, each brandishing a firearm at the other. Michael creates a distraction as he hears a train approaching and runs. John shoots but misses. Michael comes to an electrical connection box on the wall and uses the paperclip from the envelope to short-circuit the train's brakes. Michael flees from the subway after the train comes to a halt just inches from crushing him. Based on the photographs recovered from Michael, it appears he was aware of what was going to happen. They discuss Dr. Decker's project and his belief that the technology would allow him to view the future. While Michael is cleaning, water spills from the envelope onto the matchbook, revealing the Cafe Michelle emblem. He phones the restaurant and discovers he has a reservation for two individuals at one pound today. At the same time, Jimmy pays Rachel a visit in her apartment as she is feeding her favorite birds. Jimmy informs Rachel that Michael accomplished his project yesterday and his memories were erased. He departed Alcom. Rachel is astonished and heartbroken. Michael promised her that he would not delete his memories. Jimmy and John watch Rachel's video to discover Michael. They believe she received a communication from Michael based on her reaction while in the bathroom shower. Jimmy has a security guard accompany Rachel when she exits her apartment. John explores Rachel's restroom for clues and discovers that she will meet Michael at Cafe Michelle at 1 o'clock. Rachel enters her plant lab accompanied by a security agent. The security guy decides to stay below, while Rachel takes a lift to the catwalk above. She flees the Alcom facility once she reaches the outdoor roof. Jimmy sends Maya, a Rachel lookalike, to Cafe Michelle to meet Michael. John is about to shoot Michael from a car across the street when he is interrupted by cops. Maya tells Michael that he is supposed to give her something in his envelope. When Michael empties the contents, Jimmy instructs Maya to tell Michael that he is meant to give her the Alcom access card. Maya leans over to tell Michael to wait for her, and Michael watches her colored contact lenses move, revealing that her eye color differs from Rachel's. Michael grabs his mail and access card from Maya's purse, and Michael and Rachel leave. John pursues Michael and Rachel in his automobile. Michael and Rachel dash around the corner, stopping in a BMW shop parking lot. Michael removes a BMW key fob from his pocket and begins tapping it. A few of John's agents join the hunt. 
a helicopter carrying many FBI officers is also on its way to Michael. Michael and Rachel arrive at the dock, and the envelope falls to the ground. Michael turns around, and Rachel climbs off the motorcycle to retrieve the envelope. John shoots but misses Rachel. Rachel gets back on her motorcycle, and the chase begins. Police cars and the FBI helicopter approach, and John leaves the scene. The police cars pursue Michael and Rachel, but they flee. Rachel enters the hotel room and notices Michael snooping through her bag. She delivers him some of his clothes that she brought and discovers he does not remember her. She gives him photos and a DVD player to remind him of their time together before leaving the room. Michael examines the photographs and videos and Rachel returns. Michael apologizes, he can't recall. Michael and Rachel are discussing when Michael recalls that when he received the envelope, he was informed there were 20 items, but he only counted 19. He uses the magnifying lens and notices that one of the stamps on the envelope is unusual. They go to the school across the street from the hotel and examine the stamps with a powerful microscope. They notice that one of the stamps' eyes contains copies of future newspapers. According to the press publications, the U.S. government may execute a preemptive strike on another country. The ability to foretell a future leads to our annihilation. Michael intends to destroy the machine. Stevens informs Jimmy and John that he needs another day to locate the bug in the system. The FBI agents are watching traffic cameras. One agent suspects Michael intends to return to Alcom since he included an Alcom access card in the envelope. The Attorney General wants an FBI agent to tap Alcom's phone lines. He also wants the agents to respond since he needs the machine. Michael and Rachel move past the crowd in an Alcom lobby. A security guard notices Michael and Rachel and phones John to inform him. John informs Jimmy. Michael and Rachel release the metal ball bearings from the envelope past the metal detectors, causing a distraction. They utilize the Alcom access card to break through two security doors. Jimmy is aware that Michael and Rachel are on their way to the lab and has ordered the guards to move out of sight. Michael believes they should close the door so it cannot be opened. Michael uses the Allen wrench and a coin from the envelope to disable the lab door, preventing it from being opened from the outside. Michael wants to utilize the machine to peek into the future before destroying it. He turns on the machine but receives an error message, assuming he included a flaw that prevented Jimmy from using it. Rachel wants to know if he can fix it. The envelope contains only two remaining items, a bullet and a crossword puzzle. Michael uses the crossword puzzle clues to locate the board and the chip that needs to be removed. As soon as Michael removes the chip, Jimmy notices on his monitor that the machine has been repaired and instructs John to get Michael. John phones his agents and tells them where to find Michael. Jimmy grabs a revolver from his desk and walks away. Michael and Rachel return to the machine and attempt to predict the future. Several visual fragments show before Michael is seen being shot on a catwalk. It's the identical scene from his dreams. Michael informs a terrified Rachel that he has already used the machine to change his future and can do so again. Michael and Rachel hear someone attempting to open the lab door they have disabled. Jimmy, John, and several security agents all want to get into the lab. Rachel wants to know how they'll get out. Michael looks at the bullet, the last item in the package. He looks around the lab and discovers some pistons near some liquid hydrogen tanks, so he hooks the bullet to one of them. Jimmy, John, and the agent stand back after planting explosives on a lab door controller. After the explosion, the door opens and everyone enters the lab. While looking for Michael and Rachel, John notices that the huge cover of a vent is open and informs his posse that they have escaped via it. Michael and Rachel fight security personnel they discover in the hallways and they are fired at as they travel to another lab. Jimmy tries to figure out what Michael was doing with the contraption he created. Two armed security personnel enter the lab, where Michael and Rachel are hiding. Michael exchanges fire with one, as Rachel knocks another to the ground. Additional security personnel arrive at the lab, and the fighting and gunfire continue. On the machine, Jimmy witnesses Michael being shot. Jimmy believes Michael has a rendezvous with a catwalk. Michael and Rachel continue to fight the security agents until they are all subdued. Michael notices Jimmy entering the lab and tells Rachel they must go. After Rachel leaves, he locks the glass door and tells her she must leave if she loves him. Michael and Jimmy argue in the lab. Jimmy puts a cord around Michael's neck and lifts him to a catwalk, where he drops him. The place is identical to where Michael was shot in his dreams and what the machine showed him minutes before. Several FBI officers rush through the Alum building, toward the lab. 
Michael stands on the catwalk as Rachel is escorted in by three security officers. At the same time, John is controlling the machine in the lab. An FBI agent prepares to shoot and kill Michael from behind, while Jimmy plans to shoot him from the front. Michael receives a message on his watch to go. Michael and Rachel both jump off the catwalk to just before the FBI agent's bullet passes through and kills Jimmy. John sees on the machine that he is near death and attempts to flee an explosion and fire, but it's too late. The explosion and fire demolish the lab, but Michael and Rachel survive. Michael removes his watch and leaves it in the lab before leaving with Rachel. As the agents explored the lab, they realized the machine had been destroyed. An FBI agent finds Michael's watch and smiles as he pocketed it. The attorney general wants to know whether there is any indication of Michael, and the agent claims they did not leave alive. Shorty developed a nursery business, and Michael and Rachel work there. Rachel is curious about what the future holds for them. Michael doesn't know, but he prefers it that way. He does not want to forget anything ever again. Shorty appears holding a cage with Michael and Rachel's birds. Rachel praises Shorty and tells Michael that he and she purchased the birds together. Michael recalls a clue on the piece of paper from the envelope. If you only look where you can go, you will overlook the treasures below. He then discovers a $90 million lottery ticket hiding under the birdcage. So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.